Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for attending this afternoon uh, on this um, webinar on top tips for remote auditing. Um, one little quick disclosure on NQA's behalf uh, at this moment in time before we get cracking is uh, unfortunately your, your plan presenter, um, Judith, um, who's on these slides, <laughs> cannot be here this afternoon due to some unforeseen circumstances. So I'm going to be running the show instead. Um, my name is Martin Graham. I'm the training manager at NQA and also a field based auditor as well, covering quality, environmental, and health and safety, as well as the SSRP scheme and uh, energy management. So we're going to be covering the same topics as Judith would have done, but obviously um, when, the, when the pictures come up of her, it won't be of her, it's going to be of me instead. So just that's where we are. Um, hopefully you can all see me. Um, we'll have an opportunity for questions and answers at the end via the questions panel. Um, obviously, and you will get a copy of these slides as well. So please feel free to take notes as, we go, as you're going along. But obviously, if there are any particular questions, more than happy to answer those uh, towards the end or at a later stage uh, via email and EP. Okay. <clears throat> okay. A little bit about NQA for those of you who don't know, uh, a little illustration on the screen there of uh, where we operate and the kind of some statistics to uh, impress you all. Um, obviously, we operate in the UK, America, and global, and indeed Asia Pacific as well. So, some statistics there for you to peruse at a, a later stage. Uh, some of the clients that we certify, uh, no doubt some, some, some names there that you would all recognise, uh, some high profile clients that we're, we're pleased to have um, with us as, as, as clients and that we service, um, some, some, some household and, and big brand names there that I'm sure that you'll, you'll recognise. <clears throat> So part of our price promise to you then, um, as you can see there is on the screen there, I won't read all the words out because obviously we want to get into the nitty gritty of the, um, of the webinar. So um, some, a few things to take note of there and uh, you can read that at your, at your own leisure as well. <clears throat> So, like I said, unfortunately, this isn't who's talking to you uh, this afternoon. Um, this is Judith, obviously, who I know that will be uh, presenting a webinar at some point in the future. But like I say, today you've got uh, me to listen to for the next 20 minutes, half hour or so. And uh, like I say, my name is Martin Graham, and um, not really going to be interacting, but just so you know who it is and that it's not, not just Judith there. <clears throat> okay, so. In terms of kind of, you know, this webinar is going to be around um, an effective kind of or remote auditing, essentially something that's affected us all over the last six months or so, um, in QA in particular. Um, we're undertaking all of our audits of very, very high percentage now uh, remotely. Okay, so just kind of kicking off the bat then from an effective internal auditing perspective, one of the things to kind of establish at the beginning is what you're auditing. Okay, so fundamentally this comes down to the scope of the audit. Okay. So in the instances for those clients, those of you who have got certification with NQA or any other certification body, um, they will provide that to you. That's essentially what's with us in your scope of certification. Okay. And obviously that is essential ultimately what your management system is intending to cover and the, the audit will cover as a result of that. Okay. Need to establish there, like it says there, whether it's going to be desktop or live. Um, obviously, paperwork will, ev will evidence traceability and give a sense of compliance for what's really going on. So it, it, that's kind of one of the key things with, with kind of any auditing in general, but in particular, um, remote auditing, um, you can take things at face value and obviously you can review documents via email and so on. But obviously, um, having a direct interaction with people via a platform such as Teams or Zoom uh, gives you that kind of level of direct interaction that is, is critical during, during audit. So that's one of the things to remember there, how, how you're going to approach and how you're going to audit. <clears throat> uh, checklists uh, and improvement tools. Um, you know, kind of basically, you know, kind of with, 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 with checklists, it's a good, good aid memoir. So look at kind of, you know, the areas you want to focus on within the scope of the audit and the, the subject matter. So you will really, you could focus the audit and get down into the nitty gritty. So how has remote auditing changed things then? Um, in theory, like it says there, um, it hasn't changed anything because obviously, you know, it's still essentially a question and answer uh, process that we're all going through. But obviously, the fundamental change is, is how we're extracting that information. OK, so obviously, uh, for me, certainly for the last 20 years I've been auditing, it's always been about going to a client, 
sitting down, having their direct interaction, walking around the site, you know, looking at evidence, looking at screens and talking to people and so on. Whereas now, obviously, it's now all done remotely. So that interaction is now via, via a platform that, that, that suits the organisation and, and the certification body. Um, obviously, like it says, there's some pros. Obviously, you know, it, it thoroughly tests the system. One of the things that I, I have uh, picked up on is, you know, that it does allow you to go maybe a bit deeper into particular areas. So you can, you know, you can maybe focus a little bit more. Um, communication is, is critical as part of the process. Okay, so it's kind of, you know, it is important to kind of just make sure you've got that communication, those um, those lines established okay and it can lead to kind of you know enhancing communication within the organization it does lead to more creative questions certainly it's um the, the idea of kind of you know kind of getting information remotely when you can't see someone's the whites of someone's eyes it's, it does lead you to kind of you know you really kind of you know, think of the way you're asking a question and that, that's one of the important things to remember uh, you can plan more effectively certainly you can be a little bit more kind of disciplined with your time it does actually allow you to kind of if you like um be a bit more kind of effective in terms of you know you're, you're not having to uh, travel to clients and so on and so forth so you've got kind of a bit more time availability there you're giving the gift of time to some degree less stress for the client and indeed um and the auditor you know it's um it can it can uh it, it does make a big difference. It's it, working remotely. It does take that stress of time and that pressure element out of it. You know, you can do things at a slightly more relaxed pace as long as you plan effectively and um, and give give, give 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 the attention that it needs. Uh, cons then, okay. Um, some of the things you know, kind of the some things you may be come across uh, potential to hide evidence. Obviously, there can be a tendency there sometimes that you're presented essentially with just the information that people want you to see. Um, there is a you know for if, if you're feeling particularly uh, you know paranoid about the whole thing, um, you may not speak with as many employees as you like. Sometimes there may be a restriction on who's available or who has access at certain times, or indeed the, 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 the platform hardware and software that's necessary for a remote audit. And of course, uh, technology failure, it, it can happen. We've all got, you know, things like bandwidth issues, webcams are stopped working and, and so on and so forth. So there, there is that to contend with as well. <laughs> so one of the most important things when it comes to uh, remote internal auditing, uh, certainly to make it effective, uh, is to prepare your client or, or staff. What is the best method to view the information and communicate? That's one of the fundamental things. I would, uh, the ultimate top tip, is that you can affirm the platform that you're going to be using and, uh, and run through that process and, and test it and make sure everyone's got everything that they need in terms of you know accessibility you know things like like i said earlier webcams and so on and so forth make sure that people have actually got that to hand okay so preparation is critical that initial front end communication make sure people understand what we're going to be using and and, and how we're going to be using it okay like it says there who do you need involved in the process okay Essentially, obviously, depending upon the nature of the audit and the scope of the audit and the standard, um, certainly kind of need a member of the leadership team, uh, member representation from departments, and um, you know, obviously, but there's scope there to kind of open out the uh, the audience as as you need be, as you would indeed with any audit. Um, thing to remember, obviously, is just make sure that the people that you need are actually available, and indeed, you know, kind of can can have access to the hardware and the software that's necessary. And lastly but not least, in advance of the agreed audit dates, send a detailed plan for distribution. Absolutely, I think um, the audit plan, it always is important, it's a critical document, but uh, if ever there was a, it's really taken a, you know, a, a much greater, you know, kind of focus during these remote audits that people can really look and say, okay, what time is, is needed for what department, what process, who needs to be available and so on, because you've got to remember that, you know, in these situations, you've not got like a, a direct contact or a boardroom for people that you can just call on at any given time. They may be, they're obviously working remotely and distantly, so they need to understand when they need to be available and at what time, so they're not sitting there just, you know, waiting for the, the webcam to be activated and so on, okay. <clears throat> So one of the things that um, obviously we generate as part of a certification, a certification process um, is uh, an audit plan. And one of the things, this is kind of a typical template, if you like, that we um, that we issue out. Um, so this has got Jude's name on, obviously uh, she's not here today, but um, so typically the way that we illustrate what we're going to be looking at is some usual suspects there in, in terms of time, uh, the location, what you're gonna be using, the, the areas you want to be and so on. But the main changes we've made or the, 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 to consider making you know, the kind of is the method and the records required okay so 
here's the thing it's kind of that that method you're going to be using for extracting the information so is it going to be like it says there via direct interview via skype or zoom is there going to be a case of you know kind of uh, conversations with people over telephones and so on and so forth i've even gone to the the, the sense uh, a couple of weeks ago i had a, an audit where the client showed me around with a whatsapp video like you know, and, and, and a teams video so i could do a physical tour of the site so establishing uh, the, as close as you can towards the beginning what methods going to be used you know and, and, and making sure that platform works is, is, is critical okay we also give an illustration of the um, indicative records that may be required as part to, to illustrate because obviously in a face-to-face -face real life environment audit it's um it's not it's easy as a kind of you can just oh show me this point things in the direction but obviously remotely you've not got that direct interaction so it's important that you get across to the client and indeed across to you whoever you're the auditor kind of the things you're going to be looking for and the types of records that can support it so thing to remember sometimes is obviously a records may be hard copy so they may not be available um to to that person straight away so if, if they need to be scanned in it allows for a bit of preparation and so on so you can kind of see kind of you know that the planning element of this process it, it really is critical just to establish you know the timings the people that are needed the processes that are going to be looked at the methods you're going to use and the types of records that can be used to illustrate that audit objective evidence okay <clears throat> so just continues there obviously you know the audit plan can be as, as long or as short as it's, it needs to be for, for the audit that's been undertaken okay so when you're setting your stall out then as part of the audit programming and planning process um just make sure people know it send out the relevant invites to people um make sure you know it's relatively straightforward now to schedule teams and zooms i think everyone's become a lot more kind of au fait with the whole thing but certainly make sure the right people have got the right invitations for the right times so that they can they can access the information if they need to okay so test the communication methods absolutely um it's one of the things that um i always try and do even before an audit a couple of days before even a couple of weeks before just do that little test if someone's a little bit uncertain about the platform that's going to be used or the approach and they're a little bit hesitant just make sure they can be used have a quick kind of you know five ten minute conversation just just to make sure the platform works and everyone's feels a little more feels a little bit more relaxed on the actual day then people feel a little bit more confident that things are going to be working like it says there make sure all the required know how to use the platform um <laughs> come across no in, in instances whereby you know people you sit there kind of in silence for ages the, the mute button the, the, the amount of times you know people have been chatting away with mute on and it's difficult to, you you just want to get people's attention so just get people familiar you know make sure they've got webcams available that's the important thing as well you know because um it just allows for that kind of a human element of the, of the audit process which is is very important make sure people know it may mean that you know people need additional training or a bit more expansion on you know the, just so they, they feel comfortable with what they're doing <clears throat> Okay, so and prepare and you know, the buying from the company. Okay, so um, make sure obviously you know that people kind of you know people still do need to be very much part of the audit process. It's not just a case of you know you know a quality manager dealing with it. It needs to be everyone involved in the process and, and to support the whole thing. Okay, get everyone involved in the process. <clears throat> So the audit itself then okay so a little bit of breakdown on the um on some of the terminology and approaches to this okay so the words and phrase documenting information appears 59 times within 9001 2015 alone okay so as part of that process it's one of the things that you're you're looking for obviously during any audit but certainly during a remote audit is um you know making sure that documented information is available and, and indeed that it's presentable in a, in a fashion, in a, in a format that, 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 that makes sense and shows compliance, okay? So obviously as part of auditing, absolutely, need to be sure that we, we gather enough information to support the recommendation and that, that, it, that it gives objective evidence that the standard is being met uh, for the slope that's being audited, okay? So we're just gonna have a little one through now about some of the um, the methods checking for compliance and verifying documenting information to make sure that you've got confidence in the management system. Okay. One of the things to remember as well, just a point there, um, that last point, um, it's important um, during remote orders to take breaks. Um, we've, we've all been exposed, no doubt, to increased screen times and so on and so forth. And I think it is very important to, to build into your plan and indeed uh, during the opening meetings throughout the day, 
brake times, obviously comfort brakes and so on, but time away from the screen just to give everyone a little bit of distance from the whole process. Uh, don't need to be extended brakes, just, you know, just five minutes here and there, just to, you know, stretch your legs, come away from the screen because uh, eight hours behind the screen can be, can be a long, a long, long time, believe me. <clears throat> So some of the things that we can uh, assess then using um, documenting information, okay, um, context, okay. So within the contextual side of things, um, the, the scope statement needs to be documented, okay. So one of the things that can um, can be looked at is obviously the quality manual, if there is one, that can be sent over email, so people can review the information that's being, you know, you can verify it and so on. Um, discuss interested parties. Uh, can verify the internal audit that we have confidence that processes are supported and carried out then that's what we're doing basically so essentially what you're doing here is um, making sure the context of the organization has been understood okay so and that can be verified as it says there via documents sent via email through a hard copy review if you like or soft copy review um, but also there can be you know information that's expressed uh, like via live screen sharing or indeed via um, conversation with the auditee. Okay, so there's a number of means of extracting that information. So if, if there's documented information, certainly you can review that via email, but certainly um, it, there's nothing wrong with live screen sharing. Um, one of the things that I sometimes do if your screen's being shared and you want to take some of the information away is ask the auditee if, you, if they can have a screen snip, you know, so you can actually kind of take the information away. But obviously one of the things you don't want to be doing is kind of extracting too much information. You end up with a, a report that's just full of screen snips of the management system. That's not necessarily the most effective way of doing it. Okay. So from a leadership side of things, um, documented information. Now, slightly limited, obviously, the only piece of documented information that is required from a leadership side of things, if you like, is the uh, the policy. Okay, But obviously, what you can do in this situation, during a remote audit in particular, is um, undertake an interview uh, and extract that kind of that leadership uh, you know, commitment to the management system. Okay. And as part of that, you'll be discussing things like it says they're discussing risks and opportunities, uh, roles and responsibilities within the management system, how they've been established and communicated. Obviously, you're verifying some of the key statements within the policy. The, the, the policy is a, is a key document, uh, and it's one of the things that um, needs to be you know, checked against, essentially, because the policy is setting the scene and it's driving the whole management system. So you're looking for how that's verified as part of the process. <clears throat> Objectives, obviously, are uh, hugely important within the, within the ISO standards. So um, as part of your audit, you're going to be looking through, looking to see how those objectives have been planned and executed and what arrangements are in place to achieve them. And indeed, are people aware of those? OK, customer focus, uh, verifying conformity uh, and delegate and ensure roles are supported. So really looking for that kind of that top management buy in. And that really can only really be established by um, a, a conversation with, 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 with a, per, a member of top management. So you can extract that direct information. And the way I tend to do it is um, schedule a bit at some time with the all with the UGT, with the top management representative and have a conversation with them uh, and, uh, and talk about these points within the standard. OK. And one of the key things within the internal audit plan I always do is I put that leadership element towards the front so you can really understand the context, the leadership side of things and take and, and the rest of the audit can lead on from there. Okay. <clears throat> so within the planning phase of, uh, of the audit then, okay, so the, re the requirements within the ISO standards, obviously there's this whole requirement here now about risk-based thinking and risks and opportunities, okay. So really, um, what the standard is looking for is that you you, you enhance uh, desirable effects and prevent undesirable effects within the management system. Look at the uncertainties, okay? But what you're going to be looking for here as part of your auditing process is to make sure that's been understood um, and that the um, you know that the plan element has been considered suitably by the top management team and that it's understood within the rest of the, the workforce and the people that you're talking to. Uh, objectives do need to be documented, okay? Um, so they need to be something that's, that's written down um, that you can actually audit against and, 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 and interrogate, if you like, to some degree as part of your audit process, okay? And then also you're looking for kind of how those objectives are going to be achieved in terms of the planning, what methods are going to be used to achieve them, how you're going to verify, how you're going to make sure the objectives have been achieved, and, uh, you know, and what the timescales and responsibilities are, okay? 
like it says there, kind of how the, how the plans are communicated, how, how, how do people, how do you verify they've understood within the organisation? As part of your internal audit process, your remote internal audit process, you're looking through and making sure that um, you can people understand that they've been set and you know that the objectives are being met and that they form a fundamental underlying part of the management system. Okay. So I think that's the important thing to remember the elements we've spoken about so far, context, leadership, and, and planning. Um, they're kind of to some degree they're intangible things that you can't necessarily kind of look at a document and say, yes, that's in compliance with the standard. There will be elements there, like we said, like the scope and the objectives and the policy. But a lot of this is about kind of having that conversation, talking to people and making sure that people understand what the management system is trying to achieve. And remotely, that can be a challenge. So, so obviously, yes, there's documents that you can look at, but fundamentally, you want to make sure that you can talk to the right people, various levels, and make sure that this you know, the management system is there, that it's in context, and it's been communicated and understood. <clears throat> so when it comes to... Um, documented information then that can be emailed through um, a number of things that can come through obviously you know there's nothing wrong with all just auditing you know documenting information there's absolutely nothing wrong with that in any way shape or form um, one of the some of the clauses that can be covered in there obviously like it says here so you're looking at things like um, calibration for example if you're looking at you know just trying to see uh, evidence of a calibration record being in place nothing more being that that they're being emailed through you know it's, it's, it's a document it can be reviewed no problem at all uh, competence, training, and awareness records, that kind of thing. They can all be emailed through for you to kind of review at your leisure. The thing to remember, obviously, is when you're looking at documents, is to keep them in context. You're not just looking at, you know, a random training document. It's got some context to the, the rest of the order that you've been looking at. So, for example, if you're auditing a manufacturing environment and you're on a short floor and you see someone in production, get their name and then ask to see that relevant training record. So you know, the documents that are coming through, they've got some context and they've got some relevance to you and your, and your audit, okay? But obviously documenting information itself, you know, you're looking for some fundamental controls there, such as, you know, version control and issue status, uh, approval and so on and so forth, okay? So I think the, the important thing to remember there is that documents, yes, there's obviously a lot to be said for having uh, interviews with people and verbal confirmation and obtain the evidence that way, but certainly documented information is still a fundamental um, piece of the, the auditing puzzle, if you like. And the way that's presented can come via email, or indeed it can come via um, you know, like live screen presenting, which a lot of platforms are able to support. Okay. <clears throat> Operational side of things, um, obviously people within the standard, there's a, a section eight, which is all about, about operations, the actual doing doing the job side of things, if you like, okay? So it can be a little bit of a challenge when it comes to people like kind of auditing things remotely, you think, so well, how am I actually going to audit this remotely effectively if it's, you know, if I'm not there in person looking over the, you know, looking at the shop floor, so to speak. Um, one of the things to remember is, is like it says there, and it's with auditing in general, kind of, you keep it simple, okay? So obviously you, you want to kind of get, keep, keep, keep it to the process that you would normally you would normally look at. You don't need to over audit just because you're auditing remotely, okay? You can still focus on the areas you want to. Don't feel like you need to look at every department and every process. Still just, just plan the audit and keep it keep it simple and then don't, don't over plan. That, that can be a, a, a mistake to make that you kind of over plan by look at too much in, the, in, the, in that certain time, okay? You can obviously arrange for virtual tours. Um, like I said the other day, I was on Teams and the, the client had the Teams on their mobile phone and they physically took me around the premises. Uh, we did a virtual tour up, down, left and right and round all corners and, and everything. Um, it's a health and safety audit, so there were certainly some things to consider there. Obviously, one of the things to consider is that, you know, when someone's walking around with a phone, you know, make sure that it's safe to do so. You don't want to encourage someone to do something that's unsafe, okay? So when you're remote auditing, you can say to people, well, okay, look at the overall process, and you can ask to talk to individuals after that. So individuals that are, you know, performing a particular task, say, okay, I need to spend some time with them, and so on and so forth. So it's a case of really just, you know, just being a bit more kind of methodical with the whole process, because you've not got the luxury that you can just walk over to someone and talk to them. You might say, okay, let's talk to, to um, the person that's operating that machinery. Who are they? Schedule a bit of time with them afterwards, so you can start to build that audit evidence up. Okay. Now, obviously, some processes, like it says there, level of documentation will be industry and scope dependent. So, some organisations 
for example, kind of manufacturing, we have kind of maybe potentially kind of a lot of documented information that you can go back to, such as drawings, specifications, tests and acceptance and so on. Whereas um, some organisations' processes won't have so much documentation that you can necessarily rely on. So for an operational side of things, this is where your kind of remote auditing is going to kick in a bit more because you're going to have to dedicate that time to that person, have their conversation and extract the, the, the information that you would normally do. I think the, um, the thing to remember here is fundamentally, like we said in the beginning, the process hasn't changed. It's still just about, you know, kind of looking at a process, understanding what goes on, what's the inputs, what are the outputs, who's involved, you know, what are the steps that have been taken and just verifying against that. The only thing that's really changed is how you obtain that information, okay? And instead of it being face-to-face, you're doing it remotely, okay? It's no different to, um, you know, just it, it, the process hasn't changed, the standards haven't changed, okay? The requirements are still the same, okay? So when it comes to auditing uh, operational elements then, okay? So really kind of the, the same rules apply with regards to real life auditing, okay? Um, can you demonstrate that process is in place and the users know what it is? Can we see a live example? So for example, you may not want to just take you know completed examples of evidence which it's easy to do with remote auditing you're saying to someone you know you're saying to an auditee send me some information but you don't just want to see you know completed projects you want to be able to see something that's happening in real life okay so if it's possible get that live example okay and make sure the person understands the process um in, in some ways it can be kind of easy you know just i think that's the thing with remote auditing is make sure that you do almost force yourself to actually go out and kind of you know and and, and make that, that time to talk to the auditor to the client and to the auditee to spend that time with that person rather than just reviewing documents it can be an easy trap to fall into but it's um it makes it hard work and not necessarily very effective okay <clears throat> All the process, okay, which was so what, 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 so what, what the process from beginning to end, okay. Um, I think kind of almost and trying to see clear to some degree of the, um, the prepared examples, if you like, ask to see kind of live information, random information as you would during a, um, a real order, you know, don't just don't just rely upon a, a, a completed examples that have been sent through to you because they they may, I'm not suggesting they are, but they may be kind of, you know, kind of lend themselves to kind of fully compliant. Uh, packs that you know kind of don't, don't always okay whereas if you're you're looking for something in real life it gives you a much better indication of how the process is working okay <clears throat> nothing more though of course with obviously obtaining information and um, you know again documents and then auditing back you know back backwards on that um you know you can you can you can review documents to get the idea of the process and how it works and then obviously reverse that back into uh, a actual a live audit process itself okay so you get some context first review the documents understand what the process should be and what you can be expecting to see then go out and audit it, audit it live okay <clears throat> nothing wrong with obviously things like photographs and so on and so forth to illustrate points obviously um you know if, if to, to to kind of you know see, see that a, a process is being compliant that can be of documents or if you're doing maybe environmental health and safety of kind of operating practices and so on and so forth okay so obviously i think the thing to remember here is that there's going to be a limit to some degree with the amount of documentation that you can actually review and indeed review effectively as part of a remote internal or remote audit um so obviously what you're going to be looking for is uh, to support to, to make sure that you can actually go out and see things real life so go, go out and make get, get the people out there talk to the individuals as you normally would okay when it comes to an operational side of things So performance evaluation uh, and improvement then, obviously it's a big part of the standard. Um, it's, it's towards the back, section nine, okay? Section nine of the standard, which really is kind of asked the organization to say, well, okay, ask the question. This is the checking part of the cycle, if you like. You've done the planning, you've done the doing, you've, now you're into the checking phase, okay? So you're making sure that, okay, where, where are the, how are things working, okay? So when it comes to performance evaluation, one of the things um, that you need to be able to see is documented information around, you know, the management system is effective. That, that's the key word here. When you're looking through any audit, and particularly remotely, is, is, is it effective in what we're trying to achieve here, okay? Things like management review, internal audits, uh, they can all be emailed over because they tend to be kind of, you know, kind of, how shall we say, kind of complete hard copy or soft copy documents, minutes that you can review. But obviously, make sure once you've got those information, don't just take them as read, challenge them, challenge some of the outputs, challenge the process. I think you're not just looking 
the, the, the results of these processes, such as the manager review minutes and internal audit reports, they're the outputs, but also what you're looking for is, okay, what's the process itself, who's responsible for them and so on. So when you're doing a remote audit, it's easy to fall into the trap of just reviewing documents, whereas you need to make sure that you understand the process as well, and that you're getting your head around kind of who's involved, on what stages things need to happen, on what information is there. And that's kind of, with remote auditing, it is difficult because obviously, you know, you've not necessarily got that person there live and attentive the whole time. But don't be afraid to uh, schedule more time in and say, look, okay, I'm gonna spend 10, 15 minutes reviewing this, but then I do need to talk to someone again. Just keep, you know, the, 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 the client ultimately should be there for your you know, attention, if you like. You don't need their full and undivided attention, but they should be made aware they will be can be called upon any time and keep the process moving okay and do make sure they have kind of regular catch-ups there's set points for catching up with either the audit team or the auditee so they can set with the um so they know exactly what's going on but yeah maintain the level of communication and uh, because it does it is critical <clears throat> So what's take away from the whole process then, or certainly maybe uh, this afternoon, uh, this last half hour or so, um, make your life easier, okay? So if documents can be emailed over, um, you've got some references there within the slides, request those documents beforehand, okay? There's nothing wrong with having information emailed over prior, so you can get a bit of context, understand the process and so on, just to give you kind of, you know, like a prepared checklist and questions that you might want to ask about that. So nothing wrong with that at all. So part of your planning process, if that's kind of, um, uh, if that involves requesting information and documents, that's absolutely fine. But obviously, then you can then start to build on that as you, you undertake the audit itself. Okay. Don't uh, the, the lost the lost art of conversation. It can be um, you know kind of obviously auditing is about talking and listening and so on and so forth. Like we've already said, you know, overviewing documents will give you an indication. It kind of it give you an indication of things that have been completed. But fundamentally you're looking to understand the process and people's understanding of that. So an awful lot to be said for having that kind of live conversation. I know when I'm doing remote audits, a lot of the time, I just leave the teams running all, all day long so that it's there. And I say to the client, look, you don't need to give me your full and undivided attention, but certainly, you know, kind of it's there and um, it's, it's there if need be. So almost like you're in the room, so to speak. Um, but like I say, documents is fine, um, but obviously, you know, make sure that obviously you have those conversations um, with, with people and with the auditees so that you can understand that they, they still understand the process. Plus as well, you know, it lets you know that you're there and you, you, you're talking to another human being, okay? Uh, don't panic, obviously, absolutely. Um, keep calm and audit on, okay? So the external auditor has responsibility of managing the audit day, ensuring it goes smoothly. Um, but obviously, you know, fundamentally, just just maintain that communication. None of this is meant to be too stringent or daunting or forensic. It's okay. It's a, it's a two-way process, and obviously, during audits, is you know, just just maintain that communication. If something's not working, or you need to go offline for a moment, come back on, and and, just, and let's start the, start the whole thing again. Obviously, just maintain that momentum at the whole time. Okay. Obviously, something to be aware of certainly is um, secure and confidential information. And obviously, nowadays, there's an awful lot of information moving around uh, the airwaves, so to speak. So, obviously, if information is being requested or transmitted um, that's of potentially sensitive nature, make sure that's um, that's all confirmed beforehand. Uh, that the, the, the relevant kind of um, approvals and consents and so on are in place. Obviously, you, can, you may not have your own arrangements in, in regard to that check policies and, and so on and so forth that the, the information is being sent that it's okay and also indeed um, when you're re you're receiving information that it's being um, stored and securely or dis in, disposed of or whatever it may be in accordance with your own arrangements obviously um that's that's a potential conversation for for another day okay. yeah, just make sure you've got the um the relevant arrangements in place when it comes to to information that can be personal information or commercially sensitive information whatever it may be Just my, kind of main, main takeaways then is really kind of when it comes to remote auditing, certainly key things to remember are planning. Absolutely. It's um, yeah, make, make sure that the people need to be, make sure people know uh, who needs to be available, what kind of information potentially could be requested. Um, make sure you understand what platform is going to be used. Uh, so that's better that it's been tested. Uh, make sure, you know, this, that the platform's stable, you know, that you've got things like, you know, the hardware and software and so on and so forth. 
Um, communication, absolutely maintain that throughout the day, set in times for catch up calls and so on and so forth. Make sure you take those breaks. Like I said, um, it's, 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 it's important. You won't believe how tired you get in front of a screen all day. Um, don't overrule it. Obviously, you don't, don't go, you don't need to go too forensically. If someone emails you a document, you don't need to spend, you know, necessarily any more time on that than you would normally during a normal audit, just because it's there in front of you and you've got, the, it feels like a little extra time to do it. Um, don't over plan, you know, it's, it's tempting to kind of, as always in most audits, to kind of put a lot into a day and you might struggle to, 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 to realise that. Um, do get out on the shop floor as much as you can, ask for, you know, kind of, you know, interaction and discussion with as many of the workers and, and auditees as you can, ask them about their process, you know, don't just make it a case of, you know, sitting remotely and looking through documents, it can be, that can be a little bit uh, hard going and <laughs> soul destroying for everyone, so do maintain that level of interaction uh, with, with, with your auditee, with your clients, because it makes the process go, well, it, it's much more pleasant for one thing, Plus, it's a much more effective way of auditing that you're not just you know, sitting there looking at emails as well. Okay. So that's pretty much kind of the, the subject matters. Obviously, that there might be a few questions that we, you, you guys uh, might have some questions for me. Um, more than happy to answer those. Um, like I say, you will get copies of these slides um, to take away. Um, a couple of little things uh, just on your screen there about kind of COVID-19, obviously it's affecting everyone. Um, you know, there, there's a couple of things that are on offer there in terms of you know, support tools, uh, so virtual training obviously that we're offering and, uh, and indeed the COVID secure side of things as well, all of which the information is available uh, on our website and any one of the team will be more than happy to um, discuss any of those, those, those things with you. Okay. But obviously, as you can see there, implementation guides that are all available on uh, directly from us or via, via the website so please feel free to uh, to request and, and peruse those okay so if there's any questions or answers i'm more than happy to, to answer those for you like i say you will get a copy of these slides to take away um like i say if there's anything specific i'm going to look at the the q a side of things now to see if there's anything happening uh, I'll answer those as we go along. If there are more general, general questions or grouped questions, we'll send those responses out as a, as a group email afterwards. But um, I hope that's been of some value to you. I'm sorry that Judith wasn't here. <laughs> um, but we would have spoken about much the same things anyway. So um, I hope that's useful to you and uh, stay safe. Uh, enjoy your re remote auditing. And um, yeah, thanks very much for attending. Take care, bye now. <laughs>